Everyone, Professor Hank here. So today I'm gonna to give you a brief introduction to multi-dimensional arrays in Java, and we'll take a look at an example of a two-dimensional array to see how this is done. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, now you may recall that we can create a array in Java by doing something like this. So we have to create a reference and then we have to use the new keyword and the data type of the array that we want to have. And then we have to say how many elements that we want inside of it, right? So we can do something like that. Of course, we have to have a name for our array, so we'll call it R. And then from there, I can access the individual elements of the array by using the different subscripts, right? So I can add to the first element of the array or I can store in the first element of the array, you know, maybe nine. Right. And then I can access that by, you know, using that same subscript and I can use that element of the array anywhere that you could use that data type. Right. So in this case, I'm just assigning nine to the first element of my one dimensional array by array that has only one dimension. And I am retrieving that value from that first element of that one dimensional array by using that same subscript, right? We can also do this with loops, passing it as arguments to functions and so on. Now that creates for us a kind of structure that looks like maybe something like this. So we can think of it as this container that holds multiple values. So in this case, what did I do? I put nine in that very first element. And that first element has got you know, subscript of zero. But if I wanted to store more values than that, let's say that I wanted to model like a table with rows and columns. Well, then I would need a multi-dimensional array. I would need an array of arrays where instead of just storing a plain old integer in this first element, it itself is a reference for another array. And so how am I going to do that? So this is a one-dimensional array of integers. Now, if I wanted to do a two-dimensional array of integers, then I need to add an additional size here and I need to add an additional set of square brackets here and then I'll have two indexes or subscripts for accessing the memory locations within that two-dimensional array. So what so what does that look like? So let's see it. So let's say that I'm going to create an array with two dimensions. So we'll call this table and it's going to be integers and I'm going to just have it be a four by three array. So this is going to be a four by three. So what does this mean? This means that this is going to have, and I need to put my new in here, means it's going to have four rows and three columns. So think of it as a table, like an Excel spreadsheet, for example. So what I'm going to end up with is something that maybe looks more like this. So I have my first row that can hold four values. So one, or three values, because we got three columns. So one, two, three, and I got one too many in there. And then I've got three more of these guys. So we've got four rows and three columns. Three columns and four rows. Now, the way the subscripts are going to work, the way those indexes are going to work, is that each column is going to have zero, one, and two. They're going to be numbered, just like if this was a single dimensional array. And then each row is going to have its own subscript as well. So maybe something like this, maybe we'll do zero and then one and then two and then three. So now if I want to place a value in this location right here, what would I do? I'd need to do something like this. I need to say table and then I'd have to specify the row, which is one there. And I'd have to say, oh, well, I want that in the first row, you know, that, that one row, it's actually the second row, right? Because we start the counting at zero, but the second row here, and then I want to put it in the second column. So I would do one. And so then I would assign to it, you know, whatever value that I wanted. Now I can do that and I can retrieve the value in the same, in the same way. So I can do, or a similar way, I can do system.out.println and then table one of one. We're just adding an additional dimension. So this corresponds to the rows, zero through three in my example here. And then this corresponds to the columns, zero through two. So we can also use initialization lists for this. So let's create another array here, but we'll make it a little bit smaller. Maybe we'll make it a two by two. So we'll do integers again, and then I'll call this um, small, smaller table. Okay, so that's how we can use an initialization list. And this implicitly creates our array two by two because the compiler looks at this, Java looks at this and goes, oh, okay, well, here's your first row, here's your second row, and then you've got two columns in each of them. 
Okay, so now I can use nested loops to traverse this thing. So I could do something like this. I could say for int i equals zero, i less than two, i plus plus, maybe we'll call this r instead for row. So the outer loop is gonna be responsible for moving from row to row, and then the inner loop will be responsible for moving from column to column. So we'll say int c equals zero, c less than two, c plus plus. And then from there, maybe we'll we'll total up all the values. So we'll need an accumulator here. So we'll do something like sum, initialize that to zero. And then we'll just do sum plus equals smaller table. And then we'll say R for each row and then C for each column. So when the R is zero, we'll be looking at the first, we'll be looking at that first row. When C is zero, we'll be looking at that first column. So we'd be looking at right about here. And then when R is one, we'd be looking in the second row. And then when C is one, we'd be looking right here. So with this table, we look like this, right? So maybe we should do an updated drawing here. So we'd have something that looks like this. So we've got our zeroth column, our oneth column, we've got our zeroth row and our oneth row. So the eight goes here and the six goes here and the seven goes here and the five goes here. So we're gonna traverse this row by row and then within each row, go column by column. So this will start off taking the eight and then adding that to sum, then taking the six and adding that to sum and then taking the seven and adding it to sum and then taking the five and adding it to sum. So this is going to give us what 26, I think. So let's let's test it. So system dot out dot print mine, and then we'll do uh, sum, and we'll see if we got the right answer. Then we'll see how we can print out the contents of that two dimensional array. Yeah, there's the 26, and we'll also see how we can search uh, that two dimensional array for a particular value. So we can print out the contents of that two-dimensional array by using nested enhanced for loops. So we can do something like this. Remember it's an array of arrays. So the outer loop is gonna be traversing an array. So we have to use an array reference and that's the rows, smaller table. And then we're going to have our inner loop that's gonna be responsible for traversing each of the columns, which is itself its own array. So we'll do something like for int column, and then we're going to traverse that row. So we can do that. And all we have to do now is print out contents of C. So we'll do system.out.print C. And we'll put a little space in between. And then once that row has been printed out, we'll move the cursor to the next line. Something like that. So let's see that 8675 printed out on the screen as a nice little table. So there you go. Very, very, very last example I wanna do for you here is we're gonna search our table. So let's go ahead and just use an if statement. So we'll do, we'll use those um, those uh, enhanced for loops again to do this, I think. And so I'll just copy and paste that. And instead of printing stuff out, I will search for it. So I'll just do something like, well, if C is equal to the target, then we will print out something like found. Found it. Okay, then we'll go ahead and create ourselves a target variable up here. Initialize with seven. And then let's see if we find that seven within our within our two-dimensional array up here. See the output, found it, got it. Now let's test to see if it behaves correctly if we search for something that isn't in our two-dimensional array. So three is not in our two-dimensional array. So we shouldn't see found it this time, and we don't. Now you're not limited to just one dimensional or two dimensional arrays. You could create a three dimensional array. You might uh, think of maybe like a Rubik's cube or a Excel spreadsheet. So in an Excel workbook, you've got a spreadsheet that is like, like a table, but you can have multiple spreadsheets, right? So multiple tables within that book. So that would be an example of a three dimensional array. Four dimensional array, you could have that fourth dimension represent time. So it could represent, you know, how the numbers change over time. Fifth dimensional array it could be multiverses or something you know and, and, and uh, past that i don't know it's a little too esoteric for me man but i'll show you what a three-dimensional declaration would look like a declaration for a three-dimensional array we'll we'll see what that looks like so all we do we just keep on adding those um those square brackets so we'll say 3d array and then we'll do new int and then you have to specify the size of each of those dimensions so we'll say i don't know eight six seven so if we go with our analogy of a spreadsheet right like an excel workbook or something like that what this does is this sets up a table that's eight by seven and then we got seven of them that's the way you could think of it now you can pass these guys as arguments to methods so let's add 
a method here. So public static uh, void, and then we'll do um, print. Okay, and so we'll print out a two dimensional array from within this method. So what I got to do is I've got to put my parameter list in here. And so this is, this is going to be a two dimensional array. We're going to have the two square brackets, and then we'll just call this parameter R. Okay, so we can just borrow our enhanced for loops construction down here. So just grab this guy, these guys up here, and then I'll just paste this here. So you can see we've got similar kind of construct, but since this is parameter name here, I'm gonna to have to use that here. And so now I should be good to go with this, right? I've got my outer loop traversing the array of arrays, and then I've got my inner loop traversing each array for each element of the array of arrays. And then we're doing our printout thing like we did before. So we'll simply go down here, and we'll replace this stuff with a call to that function. So we call that function print, and then we'll pass to it as an argument, smaller table. Just the name, nothing else, because we want to pass the entire array. And so now if I run this, you're going to see that we print out the table um, yet again. So there you go. So that's how we can pass a multi-dimensional array to a function. Now, if I had you know more than one dimension for the array that I wanted to pass to my function, to my method here, then I would just add additional square brackets. So that's everything that I have for you in this video. As always, if you're a student of mine, you have any questions about any of the content in this video or any of the other videos in our courses, feel free to contact me via Canvas email or stop by our online office hours. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.